Welcome to the PACE Analytical Video Production Series for Air Sampling. We hope that this video is informative and assists in the sampling process. PACE Analytical has created the following demonstration to familiarize you with the AIR Laboratory Canister Media and to provide corresponding sampling instructions on how to collect a grab sample. We will walk you through this simple process to collect a successful sample in a canister. If you have any questions about the sampling process, please contact your PACE Analytical Project Manager for clarification. In this video demonstration, we will cover the following items. Number one, receipt and inspection of the canister shipment. Number two, connection of the tubing and fittings to a predetermined sampling point. Number three, sampling with the canister. And finally, number four, completion and return of the shipment. Section 1, Receipt and Inspection of the Canister Shipment. The first step today will be to unpack your box or boxes of canister sampling equipment. Simply open the box and retrieve the canister. Pull all contents of the box out and be sure to look at the bottom of the box for small pieces of media and paperwork. After checking the box for all items, be sure to set the box aside and save it for the return shipment. Now that you have removed the contents of the box, you will need to do a thorough inspection of all parts received. Please do not attempt to open the valve on the can until you are ready to sample. We will get to that in great detail later in this video. Proper inspection is best achieved by using the packing slip or bottle order as a reference list. Today, we see that our bottle order is for one canister with tubing, fittings, ferrules, moisture filter, and a standalone gauge. Take some time to compare the contents of the box with the packing slip and be sure to notify PACE of any discrepancies. In addition to the packing slip, there will be a chain of custody, written sampling instructions, and PACE's media rental policy. Please familiarize yourself with these documents. Take your time to carefully review the instructions and policies. Here is an example of the canister. The canister will arrive with a protective brass cap on the sampling valve. If you are collecting at a predetermined sampling point, you will have also received a bag of materials with the order. If you received this, it was prearranged at the time the order was placed by your PACE project manager. Inside the bag is the tubing, swage lock fittings with ferrule, and moisture filter. Also included in this shipment is a standalone vacuum gauge. The moisture filter is used typically for soil gas and sub-slab sampling. The moisture filter and the tubing are only to be used once during the sampling process. These items are not intended for multiple sampling events. Before we move on to learn how to make the connections, let's take this time to familiarize ourselves with the proper connection order of the equipment provided. See how the tubing and fittings will be connected directly to the valve of the canister. The moisture filter will be placed at the opposite end of the tube. Section 2. Connection of tubing and fittings to a predetermined sampling point. Now it is time to prepare the canister for sampling by making any necessary connections. First you will need to remove the brass cap using a 9 16 inch wrench. If you were not sent a vacuum gauge or any tubing connections, you are now ready to move on to sampling steps in Section 3. If you were sent a standalone gauge, now is the appropriate time to connect the gauge on top of the valve to check the vacuum on your can. Otherwise, move on to the next step of connecting the tubing and fittings. To attach the vacuum gauge, first finger tighten the swage lock nut and then use the 9 16 inch wrench to make the connection leak tight. Open and close the valve quickly to achieve a vacuum reading on the gauge. Depending on the atmospheric conditions, the reading should be between minus 26 and minus 30 inches of mercury. After obtaining the reading and ensuring the valve is closed, you must remove the gauge with the wrench and move on to connecting the tubing and fittings for sampling as required. If required, you will attach the tubing and fittings at this time. The connection here utilizes swage lock threading. For a proper connection, it is very important that no cross threading occurs. 
A connection is first made by finger tightening the swage lock nut. Once you have attached the fitting, you will need to tighten it with the 9 16th inch wrench. This final connection must be leak tight. Please use only the open-ended wrench for tightening purposes. Do not use pliers or adjustable end wrenches. Now the moisture filter, if provided, will be opened and placed into the free end of the sample tubing. Section 3. Sampling with the canister. Now it is time to sample. To begin sampling, simply open the canister valve. There are two types of canister valves, the rotary valve and the toggle valve. The rotary valve is opened by turning the valve one full turn counterclockwise. The toggle valve is opened by flipping the toggle upward. During the initial sampling process, you will hear a rush of air as in this example. The grab sample will fill in approximately 30 to 45 seconds. Once the rush of air has surpassed, close the valve in the opposite manner you opened it. For the toggle valve, you will flip the valve back down. For a rotary valve, simply rotate it clockwise until closed. Section 4. Completion and return of the shipment. Now that the sampling event is complete, you will need to prepare the parts for return to PACE. Begin by disassembling the parts you had previously connected to the canister. Using your 9 16th inch wrench, loosen the tubing fitting and place the parts into the original bag. You will then replace the brass cap on the sampling valve. Use the wrench one last time to tighten the cap into place. See the sample documentation tag attached to the canister. Take a minute to record your sample information on this tag in the allotted area, including the client name, sample ID, collection time and date, name of sample collector, and the analysis. It is very important that you document this for your field quality control. In addition, it will help you in the next step. Verify that all parts you received are ready to be sent back to the lab. Next, you will need to fill out your chain of custody. Transfer the information from the canister tag when filling out your chain of custody. Be sure to reference the canister ID shown here on the chain of custody. Now place everything back into the box. Check to make sure the canister and paperwork are in the box. If you received a bag of extra media or a vacuum gauge, confirm that these items are also in the box. Then secure the box for return shipment. For return shipping, there are no short holding times and no temperature requirements that would necessitate overnight shipment back to the laboratory. Second day air or ground shipment back to the laboratory is acceptable. Note that the turnaround time for your samples will begin the day the canister is received at our facility. It has been our pleasure to walk you through the canister sampling process. We wish to make the process as easy as possible for you. Again. If you have any questions about the sampling process or you have any general air sampling inquiries, please contact your PACE Analytical Project Manager.